<laughs> yeah. Look, uh, do you guys, see, we, do can't, you... we can't have this on record that I have a crush on her. What? This is my only crush. We won't this is your use only this. crush? Yeah. Wait. So you pretty- uh, no, there's probably there's one other girl that I that that's out there that I think is cute. This is fun. But this is like fifth grade talk, guys. This yeah. Is cool. is, is, well, that's why it's that's why I gotta keep it a secret, man. She can never you, know. Do you, do you, what, do you until she, listen, she doesn't have a boyfriend, then she can know. This podcast. What? What if she listens to this podcast? She doesn't listen to this podcast. What? What? Now, what movie do you, I, I would say maybe one movie she's in on the podcast, just as a clue. What movie do she's you, closely do think, related to a movie that's on that would relate to this podcast? That's a very weird clue. That's a very <laughs> weird clue. What what movie do we think Dom saw her in? I did not see her in any movies. You only saw her out here in real life. Yeah, and then, I met her in real life. Yeah, do and you then you saw she's an actress. Uh, yeah, I know her now. That's what I was saying. She was just. Uh, just, oh, uh, you're revealing like some an, stuff like now. Now that's a clue right there. Yeah, well, that's a clue. I, I don't want to say that. Okay. Maybe edit that out, Chad. I, <laughs> I know her out here. I've, I've, I've known her for some time, yeah. Okay, well, here's the thing. These, the, our listeners, if this is in the episode, no, are going to want like <laughs> some juicy details to someone's celebrity crush. Yeah, it's not How really a celebrity mine? crush. I mean, she's she's kind of a celebrity, but damn, you're throwing shade on your crush there, Dom. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Really, I don't know how much she does anymore. I would say the movie deleted is a pretty big kids movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? It, it's not. I mean, it's it is. Uh, people really like it, but it's not really too celebrated you know <laughs> there's there's way too many possibilities that is all right i'll, I'll say uh here's the problem chad is we're putting this on the internet where they have infinite resources and time and manpower to you know solve this. you know people all over the internet mm-hmm. identify that people are like who's the who's this woman in this photograph <laughs> <laughs> they find and, them. and they're like that's so and so she was like, dead I for 20 years looked it up but yeah. how about this what if like Someone does some internet sleuthing and they discover who this person is, and then they like send them this episode. And this w- woman is so won over by your beautiful tones. Yeah, and dude, like, what better way to win a woman's heart than to talk about children's lit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, because she knows have that you're going to put points. this level of thought into the books that the you read to your child. No, to your child that you have together. <laughs> You're gonna not necessarily the relationship. <laughs> not the yeah. one, bypass the whole relationship. That doesn't matter. Uh, here, I'll, I'll share a story of mine. Okay. Uh, celebrity crush. Uh, I just was just telling before Maria Thayer yes. from Strangers with Candy, mm. Eagle Heart, bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, just seen her, a bunch of stuff. Captured my eye. Uh, a friend works with her on a show, knowing that I had a crush, and sent me a video of them at a bar taunting me via what? drunken text. Oh man! It was heartbreaking. What a life you guys live! What yeah, a glamorous well, life! Imagine your celebrity crush going, "Oh hey, Chad, <laughs> I'm here with your friend, and now we're gonna pretend to make out." La 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 la. I was like, "This is it, this is not nice. This is breaking my heart." Why did he do that? It, it, is she is she is that what friends is do? Is she in love with you now? No, 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 no. It was the opposite. I think I think all she knew was. Uh, my friend has a celebrity crush on you. This, this is high, really funny to do. This is high level bullying, is what it is. Yeah, you're yeah, being, you're yeah. being bullied. Chad. Is that true? I thought that's what friends did. Is that not what friends do? Um, I, there is the thing like people just give each other shit growing up, right? <laughs> like, that's how you have fun is you just give each other shit, and then at a certain point you you're like, oh. How come I don't have as many friends? <laughs> and then you go, oh, yeah, those guys were just mean to me. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, Paul. Or one day I, you wake up and you're like, oh, I was the giving shit guy. And now I have no oh, friends. Oh, no, I was the shit giver. And now I, I have to eat my own shit. My favorite breakfast. Ronald Dahl book, The Shit Giver. <laughs> the Shit Giver. Ronald Dahl. Ronald Dahl. Ronald no, sorry, Ronald, Ronald Dahl's the one who wrote The Shit Giver. He tried to steal and from Ronald Dahl. And James and the yeah. Giant Shit. James yeah. and the Giant. No, come on. That was the Giant Bowel Movement. Oh, I'm Jesus. sorry. Remember, I'm sorry. Remember I'm sorry, your books. Sorry. Uh, Paul, I mean, you're you're very heavily committed in your life to a wonderful, wonderful woman. Yeah, we got married. So, hell yeah! By the way, congrats on that. Congrats, yeah, <laughs> congrats on that. <laughs> but th- put that away. I don't want to talk about that right now. Okay. C- celebrity crush. Go. Uh, my celebrity crush. It's pretty. Uh, it's been uh, the same girl for for a long time. Lizzie Kaplan. Oh, okay. That's a good one. She's I, not attainable I, though. Like the, yours, both of yours, I think are like on a level like where you could date them. 
Well, my my crush is just a crush from my life. <laughs> <laughs> like she just so happens to be a celebrity. I, I I've had that. I met a girl out here once. And I surprisingly somehow hit it off with at a party, and then found out she was on like Numbers uh-huh. or something. I was like, uh-huh. oh, I could be dating the girl from Numbers. I don't know if it was Numbers. I still have a pretty big crush on Winona Ryder. Okay, yeah, I get that. Uh, yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Which yeah. wait was so like in Star Trek when she was like had old lady makeup on? Was that just like wait what 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 she wasn't on Star Trek the Star Trek movie? Hold on, I don't I'm, think I'm Googling Winona this. Ryder, Beetlejuice, you're just Beetlejuice with Nona Ryder. Hold yeah, on, I think you're just second. thinking in Star uh, Trek 2009. She plays oh, Spock's new mom. She plays Spark's mom. Spock's mom. Yeah, she has like weird old lady makeup on. She looks like Tina Fey. In yeah, it. that's how good of an actor they she gave is. her. Like I, I couldn't tell it was her. They gave her old lady ridges. Mm. That's fine. Okay, all right. No, Paul, I'm just, uh, you can't just say Lizzie Kaplan because that's too... Like, what is your, like... The word's not obtainable because that's very, like, like cocky of like, any of us to say like, obtainable. Oh, but that's what I'm... Well, my thing was, like, she's, like, legit famous and I would never run in any sort of circle with her. Like, here's, here's my thought. When I came out to L.A. a couple years ago, I had the thought of, like, you know... Remember vitamin C put a smile on your face? Uh, of course, now, yes. Now the head of Nickelodeon music, yeah. Is that what she's doing now? Well, Wait, what when is she I was doing working, now? Where, when I was working with Nickelodeon, that was like one of the stories that came out. And me and my buddy were like, ah, look at that. Vitamin C. Well, I guess in my mind, vitamin C was like, I don't know what she's doing here. Maybe she just like work in a normal job. Maybe I could run into her and they could date vitamin C. Because <laughs> she like wouldn't be in such an un untouchable level where I couldn't even like run into her somewhere. I'm yeah, Googling I only her. say that maybe it's she isn't that anymore because Nickelodeon music doesn't really She's exist. adorable. Maybe. She's I, I think, adorable, I man. Put a smile on your face. So, Paul, what's your version of that? Of vitamin C? I don't... If we, if we were lucky enough to ever have the meat cutes with these people... Jeez, I don't even be? know. I don't know if I've thought about it that much. Um, like, I'll, what are you thinking? Like, someone who's not too famous yet? Oh, okay, I, I'll give you sure, one. Sure, I guess, or, or past their fame. I, I, or past... Oh, well, how about early fame? I, I'll sure. give you... The girl from uh, Master of None, her name's... Um, <laughs> Wait, don't... Sorry, I thought you meant Master of Disguise for a second. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> from Master of Disguise, <laughs> does Paul have a crush on? Noelle Wells. She's cute. Noelle Wells. Okay. Oh, yeah. She's real cute. I, you know, I've been watching uh, Love, by the way. Have you guys seen that show? Yeah. Uh, Love, I have an issue with Love because it's my entire, not my entire life. I don't live in that guy. All of my locations I've lived in has been in that show. Really? Oh, yeah. The, the, the apartments that he lives in is where I, I stayed when I first came out here. He's Whoa. going to the Magic Castle. He's living in Hollywood. Yeah, it's very much, I think that's what's really great about it is that it's, it's really on point. I feel like they hit the nail on the head. In terms what, it's just of, like an L.A. Uh, show? Like, scene. Yeah. yeah, it's like an L.A. show. If you, have you not seen it? It's on Netflix. No, I haven't seen it. I have there's, a, there's a lot of great people in it, and it's it's pretty funny. I like it. Yeah, if you want to see, here's all the places that Chad lived his life in the first eight years I in do. L.A. I do. Love is that, love is that show. Is this so your love, story, Chad? AKA Chad's. Um, I would say, for the sake of people who watch the show, my, lo- my life has nothing in common with Paul Russ's character st- story in that. <laughs> but you don't relate to Paul Russ's character at all? I guess he lived in the places I lived. There's I a, guess he wants to be a writer. You never smoke green crack? You Is know? that a thing? He smokes green crack? Yeah, man, I, I smoke green crack. I think... So you've smoked it with me, man. What is, no, this is incriminating records. This whole thing is just going to get all, all cut. This is um, a bad opening. This is a, this ter- is a bad opening. <laughs> is this bad? Is it all over the place? We're just shooting the breeze. I'm just shooting the breeze. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share another thing. We're going yeah. to hard pivot. Sorry. We're going to hard Scotty Pippen pivot. I take all this responsibility. Dom, Dom and Chad, it's okay. You both embarrassed each other, so... <laughs> I think I I'm mostly not just, embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. I'll hold. <laughs> Vitamin C, get at me. Um... <laughs> I'm a hard pivot. So, guys, this okay. week um, I discovered that I've been living with a gas leak for the last six <laughs> to twelve months. <laughs> hmm. Like, like the kind that makes you a crazy person, kind of. Or I guess so. I guess I was <laughs> literally being gaslighted. I think what? that's what that word means. Uh, that <laughs> yeah. that. No, no. That, mean, that word means that you're, you are actively trying to make someone believe that they are crazy. Hmm. Well, maybe if my manager was trying to do that. Yeah, we don't know oh, what his manager could up be. To, I mean, he could have got the gas leak going. What kind of gas? Uh, stove gas and wall gas. Wall Whoa. gas. I don't think that's a gas. I didn't even know. <laughs> no, there's like a hole. Do gas? Does wa- do, do all hole. walls just have a gas? Yeah, I guess inside? so because in my apartment I didn't know I had a heater because why would I need one in LA? I get cold. <laughs> I, I'm a tough boy. I got this thick skin and big heavy hair, and that shit was know. just running. It's been just pumping gas without a pilot light for I don't know very long time mm. and my oven has been just pumping out gas all the time you're lucky you're a good own. boy who doesn't light things on fire in his house yeah it's a good thing i've never smoked yeah it's a good thing he switched to vaping yeah no 
No. <laughs> what, are, what is the problem with saying you smoke weed, Chad? No. Hey, man, it's 2017, dude. <laughs> the NSA listens to all of this. Chad, let, your, just, let your weed hair down, dude. You, you smoke yeah, green dude, crack. Let the dreads no, flow, no, baby. No, no, Rastafarianism. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to deal with the fact that, like, uh, understandably, at least for probably a year, experiences <laughs> in my life might not have happened due to gas leaks. Do you think, like, you, like, you could have been having, like, crazy, like, episodes in your house that you didn't eat? Archie probably went insane. Archie's probably gone. He's, he's Archie's in, did, I, here's the thing. Archie, my dog, didn't exist. What? Oh, my. I, I met him. Petting, I know. I know. You must have been experiencing you the gas. You gas leaked me. I know. You gas leaked me. <laughs> I wall gassed you. I was just laughing because I just noticed Chad's headphones say, Thor X. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you want to give a brand shout they out are, to Thor they are X? They're the biggest swinging dick headphones I ever heard. I'm sorry. These are for my VR5 headset so I can be transported to another land. <laughs> I'm sure they're great. They've just got a great, hilarious name. Let's not distract the fact that, like, this is the first time I've had non gas existence in my apartment for <laughs> a year. And I don't know the type of person I'm going to be. It smells, I, it smells fine in here. I think there's been a time or two, Dom, you come over to my apartment and been like, it smells weird in here. And I'd be like, oh, but there's so many smells it could be, Dom. Dom is very <laughs> sensitive to smells of people's houses, though. I got a, I got a big old sniffer. <laughs> oh, by the way, oh, here's the thing. You do, have a, you do have a great, strong sniffer. My manager had this statement when I told him about the gas leak. Uh, he's like, ah, I don't know. I've been by a couple times, never smelt it. I don't, think, I don't think you have a gas leak. I go, no, no, you don't understand. A person from the gas company came by and used a fancy device to determine that there was gas. Wait, so what made you like, decide that you were going to research this gas leak? Uh, you know, I had a, I had a, I had a friend over, uh, a lady friend over, and, uh-huh. and as she's hanging out, she's telling me about, uh, there might be gas here. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, that would explain a lot of comments that random guests have made over the last year. Uh, yeah, so oh, okay. welcome to a new, all new chat. Maybe I'll be into shuffleboard. Maybe I'll be into vaping. I don't know. It's a new, it's a new year. You're all into vaping, no, man. I'm not into vaping. <laughs> yes, you are. No, or, no, no, no. He's going to get into like. in my face, and I applaud. I would love to know how to do vape rings. I don't know how to do <laughs> yeah, vape rings. That's the thing, Dom. Chad's going to get into competitive pluming. Okay, what is pluming? <laughs> pluming, where you make cool plumes. Of smoke. That doesn't answer all this. I didn't know what that meant. Chad, Chad one time invited me over to show me the Sidewinder. <laughs> was a vape move he created where he just just turns his head in, in, in circles as he blows out smoke, a, a ring of sidewinding smoke. It's wonderful. Damn, that sounds real cool. Yeah, you did it. Dude, well, dude. Was, all right. You, when, when I, I came, came over, you showed me the three Gs, dude. What is the three Gs? The is that three a cell phone Gs thing? where it was, it was green crack. Uh, grapes, what does that mean? Grape soda and uh, <laughs> grenadine, and you smoked it all. You vaped it all, dude. It was crazy. Wait, that actually sounds real. Grenadine sounds real good. Yeah, it was yeah, real you're all gassed up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're gonna inhale anything. No, these that was days. old Chad thing because I have no memory of it. That was my Fight Club persona. You were, you were mm. a crazy guy during that time, man. I know, but that's all in the past now. I'm a non-gas breathing boy. <laughs> you're just a vape daddy. No, I was old vape day. Now I got to find a new life. Yeah, I'm excited to see Innocent Chad. I'm I'm looking forward to this. Oh, the old one was rough. Now he's it's- wearing a bonnet. <laughs> it's kind of like what I assume happens in Boss Baby at some point. I assume at some point. Uh, oh my God! Did you did you just gas leak Paul? Oh my God! Paul's coffin. <laughs> Paul it came through. It just shot out of my mic. <laughs> you son crazy. of a bitch! That's our friend. <laughs> <laughs> he just got married. I just got married. I'm gaslighting you, Paul. Paul, your wife's not real. It's all it's all a gas wife. Oh fuck! It, it wasn't Jen. I have I just have a dog named Archie. Wife. It's just a dog. It's a gas wife. You've been Paul. Like, Paul, there's no dog. Dog named Archie Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Goose. Welcome to Goose. When Buzz. are they gonna get to the Goose? <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favorite. One of the like I've been meaning to check out this podcast. My friend recommended it. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It seemed like a weird list of people to stalk in L.A. I don't know what it became. <laughs> Dude, uh, I, I bet you when people get introduced to this podcast, there's a lot of like. Set up like hold on, right? Oh. You, you got to make it through the first fifteen minutes. <laughs> it's tough, but it's like we're like the fucking Godfather of podcasts. Make it through the you know, first fifteen all, minutes. You know. It's a long wedding, okay? It's a really long wedding, but if you get through it, it's great. Do you ever share one of those things where you send a link to someone and it's like you got to start at eighteen minutes? If you don't start at eighteen yeah. minutes, I can't stand by the rest of this. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's what this whole podcast is. 
for about two minutes of good quality yep. content. Yep. Yep. Where we where we just lay into our album. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Goose Buds. Welcome. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Chad Quant. My name is um, Zeke Vander. <laughs> <laughs> Don't enter that name. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> so, shit. Yeah, dude, you I'm, got gassed. Like, remember, you it. didn't know my real name. Zeke Vander's pretty yeah, great. That, you were gassed out of that, dude. I'm Paul Testosterone Richie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. I, I I a.k.a. Paul Testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> that's only that's only in certain neighborhoods, Dom. Oh, okay, in, in, sure. in, in intimate relationships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Goosebuds, where we listen, or I don't even know, where we read Goosebud books and give them the hard hitting criticism <laughs> they deserve. Welcome to Goosebuds, aka girls we want to kiss, <laughs> girls we want to respectfully kiss. Yes, yeah, the yeah, girls that no, give us like goosebumps, a, dude. Only only a mutual kiss. Oh, so of we course, goosebumps. Yeah, of course. Definitely no like waiting for them to leave their place of work or anything. No. Like, Maybe you'll run into them and you'll knock over your books and they'll stop to pick them up because they're a nice person and they'll see you're reading uh, quantum mechanics and they'll be like, wow, how smart. There's no way you just carry around a book of quantum mechanics <laughs> just to impress random people, which is something I did in college. Uh-huh, and then yep. uh, for like only two weeks, Tom's eyes went so wide with fear. Uh, well, inside, <laughs> I, just, I just imagine that inside was Mad Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm really hoping they see is the Mad Magazine in the quantum mechanics. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's talk about Goose. Let's talk about uh, Return of the Mummy. Yeah, Oof. it's Return yeah. of the Mummy. The... Uh, the most anticipated sequel yet on mm-hmm. the show. Tom Cruise's Return of the Mummy. Tom Cruise's Return of the Mummy. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess Monster Blood 2, that was the first sequel that we did, right? Yeah. yeah. And we've mm-hmm. had... Not as anticipated. Not as anticipated. Definitely thought that story was done. Definitely thought this story was done. Yeah. Because this I, is following the exact characters. Yeah, so here's uh, the thing about almost, this book. This book yeah. follows up a book in which two kids got kidnapped and their, and their uncle didn't care. Yep. Uh, just let him get kidnapped and was more upset about his coworkers who weren't who weren't showing up to work. And also uh, a book that ended where a man was thrown into a flaming tar pit or maybe he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of uh, that was kind of up in the air at the end there. But I, I do remember hearing that that guy killed people. Right. He, or had he definitely murdered people. We're talking, we're talking about the first book, The Night of the Living Night of the Mummy. What, what was no, it? No, that's Night of the Living Dummy. The Mummy. The Mummy Walks at Midnight. No, Something. what is it? Is it just called The, the Mummy? There's no way he just called it The Mummy. I fucking forget what it was called. It wasn't called the, just The Mummy. The Curse of the Mummy's curse Tomb. Of the, mummy. the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Yeah. No, yes. just Curse of the Mummy. Right? Curse of the Mummy. The yeah. Scorpion Mummy. It's a book about a mummy. Book about a mummy. Yeah, they, they, I think this is where you're going, Paul. They went through a harrowing adventure, this young boy named Gabe and his way cooler hellish. cousin. Yeah. Murder attempts happened. Murder attempts. Then he summoned uh, zombie mummies with his with his claw that he had. Correct. With a random Deus Ex Machina device he got from a random shopkeeper. Yeah. No, he, that wasn't even in the book. It was at a flea market or something. Yeah, he, yeah, he just it. like pulled it out. He's like, I just bought this. I got this one day. I got this from the earlier level. You guys didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> like, but he uses it to control a mummy, right? Contr- multiple mummies. He summons multiple, multiple mummies. mummies. He gets him to dance. And they kill a man who might be a, well, not a terrorist. He's like a religious protector who kills to preserve a religious idea. So maybe a terrorist. Yeah, so a bit a terrorist. of a terrorist, maybe more of a cultist. A cultist. That's a much more better phrase for it. A fanatic? <laughs> a fanatic. Yeah, a Philly fanatic, if you will. Sure. Uh, I like to call him, I think he's a true believer. <laughs> Shout out to Philly <laughs> I watched the game. It was his birthday. But they went through all of that. Hold and up. I don't know. Hold I don't up. You guys th- it was what? the Philly Fanatics birthday today. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> and I, okay, I didn't even know about it. No one told me. Well, you have to be watching the Phillies do, game. Do they not like stop all traffic in Philly for the Philly Fanatics birthday? You know, uh, there, was some, there was some bad traffic yesterday. It's probably what happened. I heard the Philly Fanatic can go into any building in Philly on the day of his birthday and just make love to anyone. He can uh, do you that know, any day. <laughs> <laughs> the Philly Fanatic is a real a-hole. Is he really? Yeah. What, has he, like, attacked people? Uh, yeah, he has. No. He, well, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I he, just, he, he just dumps, he'll, like, he'll just dump a whole thing of popcorn on He'll steal your popcorn and he'll dump it, yeah. 
That yeah. sounds unfair. He'll fart in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that traffic, by the way, Paul, I saw a clip. A bunch of kids were on the highway uh, uh-huh. just riding their bikes and doing wheelies. Like a bunch of kids. Are you doing like a bit? I can't tell if you're doing no, a bit. That's no, true. That's real. what happens in Philadelphia. Yeah. So anyway. But yeah, back to the mummy. Okay. So these kids and their uncle suffer a horrific life-changing event. PTSD like, horrific. PTSD. What do you think happens to them after this book? You think maybe they tell everyone about it? Maybe there's like a whole kind of young Frankenstein thing where Gabe takes his monkey's paw, uh, m- mummy's claw thing, and like makes the mummies do a Broadway show in front of millions. <laughs> no, apparently you can like that. they decide to just do the same thing verbatim. Well, they leave their life and then do nothing for a year. And then they're like, let's just do a repeat, guys. Well, okay, so here's a question because I've never seen it. In... Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Yes. Uh-huh. Does it feature the two kids from the first one? No, you would think so. It's weird they've never gone back to those kids. You want to know why? Because they learned a damn lesson the first time. They're not going to go back to Dinosaur Island and almost get eaten by a T-Rex. They already did that. They're not going to well, go. you say that, but that's the exact same reason that Malcolm, Dr. Malcolm came back. Yeah. Well, Malcolm, he's the guy who's got to say, he's, he's, he's Raptor Jesus. No, but he, there's very much like, don't go back. He's like, I don't want to go back. I'm never going back. And he's like, I guess I'll go back. Well, he's got you, it. It's his life. You're the best guy he I got on this force. Why didn't Jurassic World have those two people come, the kids growing it's up? That the, been it's, like a, it's like a vacation movie. It's National Lampoon's vacation movies. They always change the kids. But, yeah. but the new vacation movie is, I mean, I, we don't want to get into the vacation lore. <laughs> I believe that's supposed to be Rusty grown up in the new vacation movie. Oh, what? I, yeah. That's think, Rusty Griswold, that's... like, redoing the trip or something. Whoa. This is the future of reboots. You make it a sequel, but a reboot at the same time. It's like yeah, 21 so it's... Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, kind of. A little less, a little, yeah, a little half aware. But not meta. Yeah, not meta. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, so to use this metaphor, you, you would think maybe even as new kids, it's the exact same kids. It's the exact same. We're going back to Egypt again. But they have no, like, PTSD from the last book. They don't even, like, mention it, he really. Does, yeah, he just ta- he brings, he whips out his claw on the plane. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Be specifics. He whips out his mummy's claw <laughs> on the plane. His, his, his black, tarred, fingered mummy's claw. Spends a lot of time talking about how warm that mummy's claw is. I'm just going to throw this out here. Do you ever think he did weird stuff with it? Oh, yeah. Well, th- I think at the end of, like... The, the first chapter or two, it's ice cold. Yeah, and it's like the worst thing because he uses it to jerk it. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God. He's That's like, yeah, my dick's so big. He's <laughs> 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 like, look how little this hand is. <laughs> I'm just saying, a weird 12-year-old boy with, like, nothing to do, he's probably tried at some point to do a weird thing with that mummy's claw. Yeah, yeah. he's done some gross shit with that. So he still has it. He knows it's magical, by the way. Again, like, and it's called The Summoner? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so well, it's so, called the summoner. Yeah, he doesn't call it that. He just calls it his like mummy claw. But he, the, but he the, knows the people that it's know. called the summoner. He calls it the jerk he, hand. He's aware. Yeah, yeah. He, he calls it old cold finger. <laughs> cold, <laughs> cold fingers. Cold finger. <laughs> no, it's only one cold finger, and he knows which one. Yeah, so it does, it's the pinky, and he you know tips it up a little bit. <laughs> but he doesn't ever seem to like. He must have carried it all the time, but I guess not. There's like that weird paragraph that I wrote down as the least consequential paragraph I've ever read in a book. Which one's that? Please read it. I I wrote this down. Back home in Michigan, I had a major panic attack when mom and dad were packing my suitcase for the flight. I couldn't find the mummy hand. And of course, there's no way I'd go to Egypt without it. I was so relieved when I finally found it. It was tucked in the back pocket of a crumpled up pair of jeans. He, well, we've already seen he has the, mu- the mummy hand earlier in the book. There's no reason for that detail. <laughs> right, there's, like, right. there's no, it's like a weird, like, you know, I almost didn't find food today, but then I found some food. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Like, it's such a non-story. I screamed reading it. I don't know why it made me so bad. Well, he had a, he, go on, Paul. He had another great line, too, where he's like, I'm not superstitious. My favorite number is 13, even. And I was like... Wait, so if you think that that's ironic, then you believe in superstition. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get this Gabe kid. I I don't remember how much I felt about the last one, but I remember this whole time going, Gabe is lame. Uh, How how are we pronouncing her name? Sorry? Sorry is what I would say. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, that's right. I think I had this problem last time we read this book. Sorry is way cooler in every way. Okay, okay, hold on. So, yeah, Gabe is a dweeb. Gabe is a big Mm -hmm. dweeb. But Sorry's a jerk. And she sucks the whole time. She's never redeemable. 
Did she suck that whole first time? So, yes. She's the, okay. So here's the thing. In this book, at some point, Gabe is like, "Oh, my cousin. Sorry, she's great when she's not being a jerk and trying to compete with me. But she literally competes the entire time. Every single time she talks, she's competing. Sorry, sucks." Hashtag, but there's a redeeming. Hashtag sorry sucks. But there's a redeeming <laughs> line, Paul, where I remember going, "Man, maybe Gabe's a little too cold blooded." He wrote, sometimes I feel... He didn't write this. This is in his actual journal. I understand <laughs> that this is the words of R.L. Stein. Uh, Gabe says, sometimes I feel a little sorry for her. Her mom died when Sari was five. That shit is and heavy. S- and Sari only gets to see her dad on holidays and during the summer. But as we waited for my suitcase to come out of the conveyor belt, I wasn't feeling sorry for her at all. She was busy bragging about how this pyramid was twice as big as the one I'd seen last summer. Yeah. I'd already been down there several times. Oh, you didn't get to see the pyramid one time. Her mom's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you're going to see the pyramid, dude. Yeah, like, this saw- is the trip you're going on. What? Why? Why, why do you think that's bragging? Maybe sorry is just looking out for some sort of like the brother she never had. You might be right. Mm. Uh, I don't know. She does do stuff to him and not apologize. She for does. It. She refuses she, to. She scares him into thinking he's dying by a poisonous beetle bite, and yeah, then but, doesn't apologize. <sighs> but like, if he's gonna fall for that, he has it coming. I, I think bullying's terrible, right? <laughs> But, like, if you're going to do the thing of, like, oh, oh, hey, watch out. There's a ghost behind you. And the kid goes, ah! Like, you, d- you, have, you have it coming. <laughs> so so you're, just- you're saying that bullying is horrible, but it weeds out the weed. No, I'm saying there's a threat. There's a minimum <laughs> threshold. Like, the super small minor- like exceptions where, like, maybe you need the bullying to, yeah, to, to, to weed out the chaff. You're just- wow, Chad. <laughs> this is some... Um- this is some controversial stuff. No, no, no. Chad, you're just saying that you think that people need to be hardened a little bit. Is what I you're think, saying? I think the minimalist, like, you got to turn the temperature up to ten degrees. You're a little Not Klingon. Right. You're being a little Klingon right now. Here, let, me, let me give it, let me give the example of what Sari did. That I do not think is actually that mean to Gabe. He had just gotten an amulet that his uncle gives him as a gift, which I actually think is pretty rad. A, it was a dope dra- amulet, yeah. Speaking of Jurassic Park, a scarab frozen solid in amber, mm-hmm. right? Very much. Arl had clearly just seen Jurassic Park. Yeah. Gives him his necklace, says it like, oh, you know, this means immortality, foreshadowing, and gives it around his neck, and then immediately Sari goes, oh, no, the beetle escaped and bit you. Pinch, and he actually believes the beetle <laughs> escaped. I think, like, that level of bullying is okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's... That's just joshing around. Yeah, that that she's just doing basic level goofs. That's yeah. friend. That's friendly shit giving, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's the good version of it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have to come back to that amulet, which we ultimately have to. But I, there is a new question that we have to ask. Sure. What's, what's this yeah. question? Well, should we go into it now? I mean, it kind of we have to kind should of we, get should we to go the through the plot character. a little bit. Well, let's, let's, hold on, let's I, I do plot. have one more. Just like one more quote of of the book that made me laugh at the beginning because i was just starting to read this and it's it's again gabe's gabe's writings uh yeah. <laughs> from his from his <laughs> scripture game <laughs> <laughs> my cousin sorry and i she's uncle ben's daughter had some amazing adventures down in the chambers of the great pyramid and all i could write was wow pretty cavalier description of meeting a mummy serial killer and also maybe having been in the mystical presence <laughs> of a mummy <laughs> <laughs> that was like all my opening notes was like this should have changed Gabe. Like, how much more interesting would this book have been if he had been like, I'm 12 and I've seen a lot of shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I know that the afterlife is real on some basic level. Like, yeah. he should be a completely different kid. Sorry should be uh, either sca- like, you know, scared all the time or maybe she's like been honing her action skills for a year. I was ready to see these kids go in with like machetes and chop some motherfuckers apart. They go in with no preparation because... At least a whip, to whip up some mummies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, what's weird is how did Uncle Ben not like spin the events of the last book into any success? Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, a pretty big deal to happen to an archaeologist. And in this one, he's they say that he's really hoping that this tomb is filled with millions of dollars of treasure <laughs> and he becomes famous. But like because already, he's and if not, he's going to be sad. You found you already <laughs> found Night of the Museum. You're good. Yeah. You're you're real good. All right. So and and shouldn't Gabe maybe should have like a thirst for power now that he's controlled <laughs> Well no, I, that's what I wanted I like this is why I, it blows my mind when Goosebumps keeps pulling all these like punches. I would love to have found out that like 
in the last year, Gabe's been like turning weird things back to life in high school. Like, yeah. how much more interesting is that to be like, I had the summoner claw, you know what? Dude, like you could have done some carry shit and like been like dissecting the frogs and you brought them all yeah, back to life. Yeah, I like, I like mummified a thing. I, and or I pet cemetery shit, yeah. Yeah, so it's way more interesting. It's like, now I'm back, I got this summoner's claw, I'm feeling like I'm gonna turn some mummies alive. or what? And you could still subvert that or you could have them like lose the claw. Does he even, does he even use it? I, besides for the jack and I don't know, Chad. No. Yeah, I think that's what he was Wait, doing. Does he it. not use the claw the whole time? He literally uh, jerks off. He jerks does off. Nothing. <laughs> he does defeat the mummy at the end by jerking off with it. He goes, that's so depraved. He goes, oh, I can't even hold my whole bond. <laughs> <laughs> my ball is so big. Um, Wait, but yeah, ball. I mean, yeah, because he's like, you know, he's messing around down there. He's exploring. He's a teenage boy. He's just doing that while the mummy's walking at him. The mummy's just disgusted. <laughs> he's like, quick. Well, it doesn't quick, work quick. anymore. The mummy's going to take two minutes to get to us. You have two minutes. Go. Oh, man. There is a cut scene. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cut scene where the, a mummy smacks him for defiling the summoner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's lay out this plot. Yeah. I feel like we just read it. I, and also, we've not talked more than like the first 20 pages of this book. It's just, we're going back to visit Uncle Ben again. Sorry's going to be there. She has dead parents, but whatever. We guess we hate her. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to go into another pyramid. Oh, and hold might, on. Trivia, yeah. too. Uh, yeah. This is the first book. Technically, The Curse of the Mummy was, but this is the first book where there's a kid that has a dead parent really yeah it's in the trivia on the wiki on the wiki hmm. i like to know that someone did, did that research yep someone read this book and went like god damn the parents are there okay, well, uh, moving I, on i think because we thought that before we were like oh there's no dad in this one he's dead and then we found oh, out oh yeah like, it was a, like one line about the dad being on vacation or you know he was shit. a plant dad or he something. was a plant dad the whole time is he really alive or dead as a plant that was like three years ago now by the way how, have I you know. realized that goose buds has been going on for some how time? much of my day-to-day existence is now thinking about random kids horror book <laughs> novels yes um yeah yeah for sure all right so right they're we going started, to the pyramid did we start this in 2014 i think we did go on i don't god we did really we did, we did. yeah <laughs> it was about jesus christ it was about and this then, time three years ago yeah, yeah. and then Uncle Ben's like, let's go to the pyramids. But like, I would say this. I don't think there's not a lot that happens in this book in the middle section. All that happens is, no. hey, we're going to go. We're going to go in. We're going to break open this this pyramid of clearly a made up Egyptian emperor mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or prince. <laughs> it's like related to Prince Tut. Yeah. King Tut. But like Prince. It's it. Yeah. It's, made, it's like a made up name. Yeah. Right. And then suddenly a gorgeous woman who I just imagined as Farah from Overwatch. Yep. Definitely. Shows up in a white business suit. But she's like shorter than a kid. Yeah, she's she like as tall as sorry. There was a weird description where she was like a woman and Uncle Ben is like siding up to her, but she's shorter than his niece. Yeah, it was weird. Well, his the niece is taller than Gabe, but so still, she's a little tall for a kid. But all that description still made me go like, what is she like five foot? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that might even be foreshadowing if you think about how she's shorter. She's like, oh, hi, I'm from the press. I've just come through all of these barricades. Again, not really clear how the security yeah. around the pyramid is in this one either. It seems like it's simultaneously very hard to get into, and just anyone can walk in. Well, I mean, you know, I think that's kind of explained later. Well, yes, but just there's a couple of problems I have with the security of the pyramids. But what, I, I would I would bring this up. What do we think? What is the legality of Uncle Ben's okay, yeah, expedition? That's what I, you know, Chad, that's a good question. I was like, and this is just a bigger question about the world that I want to ask. Uh, and and how do you get to be the person that searches the pyramid? Because everyone knows that there's good shit in there. How do you get to be that guy who gets to go in there? You know, Dude, it's like you dibs. need to get clearance from the Egyptian government. I yeah. think it's dibs. Uh, it's dibs. It's first person to run to the pyramid. Go me, 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 me. My, my, my pyramid. Yeah, what is it? No, uh, uh, shotgun. Yeah, shotgun. It's it's, it it's hands on a hard body where everyone has their hands. You guys know the documentary hands on a hard body. No, so people like probably, probably win a truck. Oh yeah, yeah. And we I, reference I it in Troll Hunters for no reason. Uh, like hands on a hard body, you put it on a truck. Last person to take their hands off gets to win the truck. That's how it is. Right, that's yeah. how it is. That's but the it's yeah. pyramid. That's pyramid uh, rule. Yeah, uh, actually, in Philadelphia, you can see some great um, 
some great Egyptian art that was donated to the museum for their help in excavating some of the pyramids. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I think there's a bust of Nefertiti or something like that, and it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's if cool. If you are ever in Philadelphia, they have quite the exhibit at the uh, Philadelphia Art Museum, I think. Or, <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those. Just Google it. This podcast is really good for learning all the arts and culture of both Philly and Egyptian LA. Egyptian art is really interesting. No, it's, I took it's, a class. Egyptian uh, culture is very interesting, which is why this girl, whose name was... Not Nari? Nari. Nyla? Nyla, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nyla Wafer. Vanilla Wafer. Nyla. It's it's Nyla because it was like the Nile. I remember. Made after the Nile and Uncle Ben's like in real, like real hot for her, but also so is Gabe. I think Gabe's got a little, he's got a little bone that he wants to put in his, in his summoner. (laughs) <laughs> when about it. There's a lot of, But like I, it's, it's weird to see a whole paragraph In Goosebumps Dedicated to how pretty a person is I don't think I've ever read in Goosebumps Like really leaning into how attractive someone is yeah. there's a lot of, like, She was gorgeous The most beautiful woman that Gabe had ever seen Must have been him when he saw that Laura Dern In Jurassic Park God. So swept up <laughs> Man Laura Dern in those cargo shorts Was real oh, mm-hmm. Real beautiful yeah. lady Um She's like, I'm just going to come with you. No verification of her identity whatsoever. Right. Uh, I guess you can come along because it's going to be me and my two like nephews, my daughter and my my nephew. Yeah, he's like, well, this is already a circus, so you might as well come along. You work for some paper. I guess you can come, but please don't report anything. She's like, okay. And he never goes like, weird that you don't have any reporting equipment or that you're like right. recording this or writing down any quotes, but you're just hanging out with us. Let's go into this period. Right. Why not? And she's like, I asked your partner. And he's like, good enough for good me. Good enough for me. <laughs> Which is, it's weird. Okay. Here's what I said. There's so many questions about all of these events based on the revelation of who Nyla is. So they go into the pyramid and just general pyramid hijinks. I swear to God, some of these chapters were lifted from the first book where he like falls through a, a hole the exact same way he did in the first one. Yep. And they uh-huh. don't they, and they have a lack of light, which kind of makes sense for the pyramids. You know, you're in this dark place. So obviously that's a thing you want to use. But it's, it feels so similar to the well, first. It's the exact same beats. There's like, all right, there's a room with white spiders. Uh-huh. Metaphor, a metaphor. Oh, my God. Is this whole book about child masturbation. Yep. That sounds a weird phrase. Yeah. About adolescent pr- puberty. Puberty. <laughs> puberty. Discovery. You and your jack off hand in a cave surrounded by white spiders. What does that symbolize? Yeah, dude. Think puberty about moment. it. It's uh, symbolism. It's up to you. Symb- <laughs> right. So that happens. And then like the rest of the book, I feel like is mostly just, well, let's just keep digging. I guess we're going to find a room. Well, there's plenty. Of, there's a lot of great fake scares in this one. The first one is a mummy walks out of the pyramid at the beginning, but it's just a guy shooting a commercial. Oh, yeah. I want... Man, can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah go for um, it. So, Ben, Guy, um, do you remember when you guys all almost died from a mummy, like a real-ass mummy? Do, <laughs> do you think maybe it's a good idea to do that to the children who <laughs> may have been traumatized and are coming back to do the same exact thing? He tells his friend, a guy who's shooting a mummy, how did they get in the pyramid to shoot this commercial? They're shooting a mummy commercial. <laughs> the Egyptian government. <laughs> Egyptian government, I guess. Like, I was shooting a commercial for, I wrote this down, because I wanted to I wanted to punch up their branding so bad. Uh, let's see, what did I write down? What was it called? Uh, fuck, I wrote this down. The, the, uh, the type of oh, thing that they the were bandages? shooting for? Yeah, what was it, it called? Was, uh, it was uh, Sticky Bird Bandages. Sticky Bird Bandages, and the quote was like, so, the, exactly what your mummy ordered. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, with that slogan, that means all of your branding for the rest of your career as a company is going to be mummy related. Yeah. What does sticky bird mean? I don't even know. I was trying to piece that one together, Chad, and I couldn't. I mean, birds are used in like hieroglyphics and stuff like that and are prominent in, you know, the art, maybe. I don't know. I That's a real stretch. Maybe it was like a pun, like sticky, like a stick. Stick oh like my bird. God. But then I was like, that's a stretch still. <laughs> that's also a No, guys, this is the masturbation thing again. Wait, go oh on. Oh my God. Oh. Sticky bird. Bird is another word for your wiener. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Arlo is working through some stuff in this one. All right. So, yeah, so they're shooting around a commercial and he pulls a prank. Uh, God. 
Yeah, everyone sucks in this one, I feel well, like. That, that was a prank, and then Dr. Fielding comes in and is like, let me be at peace. Let me rest in peace, so there, it's, which is Ben's partner, Dr. Fielding. And and he does this weird thing where he's like, don't go in there, Ben. Ben, stay out. And they, and Ben's like, I'm going. Get out of here. And Dr. Fielding's like, oh, okay, and just like scuttles off. And then they go in. They find yeah. that they, they have a fake out. It's just a double fake out. Like the first one they go in is an empty tomb and then it's a real uh 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 capone's vault situation yeah, definitely yeah where they break open capone's vault on live tv and there's nothing in there uh-huh yeah. and then they're like oh wait there's another there's just a thing back there let's just break through that and then they go through and then it's like oh my god it's resplendent in here and then <laughs> and then they and then cops show up and dr fielding comes in and he's like i changed my mind i want to protect you now and then it's the that okay Sure. Well, yeah, so, all right. So the cop thing I didn't understand. This is this is my question over how much like jurisdiction Uncle Ben had. So they they break in, they yes. break in, they excavate, they find this entire tomb exactly what they wanted. Jewels everywhere. The the tomb of uh, Amun Ra or whatever his name is. <laughs> Right, uh-huh. ramen. The tool of <laughs> the tomb of ramen. Miso ramen. Yeah, <laughs> I just had a big old ball of ramen tonight too, guys. Oh, I saw. Me. I saw it. I saw Oof. them eggs. They look good. <laughs> Follow Paul's Instagram for. Well, I, fo- I followed his. I saw his wife's photo. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, but I was uh, tagged. He was tagged. <laughs> At Paul Richie on Instagram for the best best ramen photos. Um, they find everything they want. Right. And then the cops come in, and it's like a jump scare of, like, they're going to get shot by the cops? Yeah. But, like, and they're like, oh, no, you're fine. Even though I have guns pointed at you, I just wanted to secure the vault. But, like, is it uh, is it a Egypt government property when they find that? I don't, like, yeah, who owns the yes. pyramids? Do does Egypt own the pyramids? They own the pyramids, yes. right? Yes. Isn't that the problem for all treasure hunters now is if you find anything, some government's going to say, like, oh, we own those waters. Yeah, that's ours. That's ours. That's our ancient land. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you can't just come to the Redwood Forest and go, we're just going to take one of these trees back. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> that. That's America's I tree, thought, you son of a America's bitch. America's tree. That's an American tree. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, one totally thing they valid. One thing they, they, they totally gloss over and they talk about in this. Uh, Uncle Ben's like, oh, our ancestors built these wonderful things. And I wanted to be like. Hold up, Uncle Ben. Your ancestors didn't do oh, shit, just so you know. Yeah, that bothered me a lot. I don't know if you forgot about the details here, Uncle Ben. Maybe you just get down in the dirt and you care about the, the tombs, but there's a lot of history here. I think I wrote that down, too. Yeah, because it was this, this was this quote. To think that our anse- ancient ancestors were smart enough and skilled enough to build these marvels. Uncle Ben was right. I guess the pyramids have special meaning for me since my family is Egyptian. Both sets of my grandparents came from Egypt. They moved to the United States around 1930. My mom and dad were born in Michigan. That's an unneeded detail. Yeah. <laughs> Just needed- no, it's crumpled up in the back of my jeans. <laughs> What's my mummy head? So he's, he's vaguely Egyptian. And he's, like, taking credit for the pyramids. He didn't build the pyramids. He didn't. No. He didn't build the pyramids. I have the same issue with the Big Bang Theory opening theme, where it says, we built the pyramids, nerds. What? You didn't, you didn't build the pyramids. Well, they say that? The, I, I mean, it's a catchy <laughs> song done by uh, uh, Bare Naked Ladies, and it's all about how great nerds are, basically. Like, uh, and, one, and one of the things that nerds take credit for is building the pyramids. I get that one guy came up with triangle degrees <laughs> yeah. yeah they didn't build the pyramid well there's a whole great bunch of other guys came yes, up with exactly. slavery slaves so. built yeah. the pyramids slaves Slave built a marathon <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like it's a great thank kid. you slaves <laughs> it's a great kid song yeah, yeah it's a really you, really incredible but, but, go ahead and go go ahead and go, youtube wonder shows in slaves <laughs> <laughs> make sure you put in that wonder shows in first but uh like f- quick follow-up the yeah. second best song on that show Beat kids, kids on the beat, kids on the street. Beat sure, kids, sure. Beat I say that, kids. and then better than anything is all of the Clarence the Puppet stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Clarence is amazing. Clarence yeah. the Puppet could have been its own show, and honestly, it probably should have been. Uh, yes, I like, I, I like the uh, um, uh, when they do. Uh, sorry, and then we're done. <laughs> just <laughs> talk about they, random sketches. Well, they do the bootleg episode where their sh- show gets bootlegged, and there's like a shitty version of it going around, and they do beat kids. Uh, spot, but it's called Hit Children. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and uh, it's like two fists, and it says Hit with three fingers, and then Children with yeah, know, I six or that. seven. <laughs> it was uh, when when we were working on um, 
the Remember Hour, it was real hard not to just rip off Wonder Shows so and, good. Yeah. and do a ton of stuff Wonder Shows and it done. Anyway, so these kids are ungrateful. Or they're overly grateful for the... No, they're ungrateful for the pyramids and the sacrifices that thousands of lives cost the, to build. That the poor Jews did. You know, oh, all yeah. the hard work oh. that the Jews did for them. <laughs> is that a... Is that a that's my, that's my Tim Allen agreeing... Agree, un, uh, 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 agreeable grunt. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say it's your Tim Allen grunt <laughs> of uh, solidarity and respect for our Jewish ancestors. Oh. <laughs> well, like that's one of the grunts he does in the show. Anyway, continue, continue. Uh, now I'm just expecting all people like sitting Shiva for six days just grunting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they go in the pyramids day after day, and they keep doing more expeditions. And it's weird that they're like, "Did you knew this was going to happen, though, right, Uncle Ben? If they take like if the Egyptian government seizes anything, you weren't going to make a lot of money unless you're going to write a book about it." Right. But if you're going to do that, you should have done after the first book. Like when you were almost killed by a mummy and a guy who loves mummies. Theoretically, a giant conspiracy of uh, pyramid protectors. <laughs> yeah. You should have written about that. I would have bought that book. And how did he get so far into the pyramid without clearance? Like, that's my big question. Like, how did he go so far to opening the room with all of the magic items in it? No, and no, no. Jewels? Okay, so what happened here? Let's clarify. So what 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 did happen was. The they he was allowed to be there, but Doctor Fielding was having second thoughts for some. He it's Doctor Fielding guys all over the place mentally. He's, he's a big red herring of a character yeah. in multiple ways. He was like he was for it, but then when they got close, he was getting cold feet because he didn't want to get cursed by a mummy, which is what a scientist would definitely think. <laughs> <laughs> he's more respectful of mummies being a man who has compared to a man who's met a mummy. Yes. <laughs> Uncle Ben has no reservations over yeah. any of this. Well, he's 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 hungry for the riches. I, I would also say that throw this out there, though. You could use all of this to justify any of these actions if you wrote it a little bit better. If he was like, I've met a mummy and I'm not scared of them anymore. Great. Cool. I like this character. He doesn't even mention it. Right. Yeah, it kind of sounds like Uncle Ben is just like getting his kids involved only because they are down with dealing with mummies. Like they're the only ones who are going to be by his side and then not remember anything. Do you think he like almost discovers a tomb? He's like, um, listen, we can't open this for months because my kids don't get out of school until June. We can't open this until. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Spring break, maybe. Yeah, we need, some, we need some child body shields. Um, <laughs> I just need children to do my dirty work that you guys won't do because it's illegal. How weird is it that this book references the deadly bite of a scarab and then has no scarabs in it? Well, well, it does. we'll get there. Why don't we just get there right now? We talked about this real quick. I just want to. I want to insert. I googled. Uh, did slaves build the pyramids? Because you know what, I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, we're saying this as if it's verbatim. A lot of people uh, think that they didn't. So maybe what? maybe we're wrong. Wait, is this like slave pyramid deniers? Harvard Magazine wrote about this, so there's got to be some truth. Interesting. Well, yeah. I believe what they believe is that they built the pyramids because they all believed in the religion that the or, you know, the the the, the purpose, mis, the, the magic and, oh, and sure. purpose of, of the sun and worshiping the sun and doing all this. Um, Egyptians, so they you believe, get one. You get one back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, if people theorize that people willingly did it, but that is hard. Hard, hard labor yeah. that they did, and uh, I, I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure not all of them were. I'm sure not <laughs> every Jewish slave that worked on the pyramids every morning would have been got like. You know what? I guess I feel like working on that pyramid again today. <laughs> Can't wait to be in that hot sun Can't lugging rocks. Sun, push up a giant rock that's going to smash me probably. Ah, oh, God, just there's a, nothing else to do in this beautiful desert paradise. Just to make a pyramid <laughs> for the king. Just for him Just for him to stay into. Oh, so this is, why, this is the perfect... I wanted to bring this up. So the, the religious belief back then, yes. right, was that if you were buried in a pyramid, mm-hmm. you would live forever in in their version of heaven with all the stuff, right? Uh, yeah, what is it called? Uh, you, it's like a ah, oh gosh, can't remember it. Go on. We're not. Well, I'm just like it's. I can't remember. I couldn't remember before reading this. This shows how how little educated I was on the subject. Was do they live forever in the pyramid with a bunch of cool shit? I.e., like being buried alive with like a TV and PlayStation, so you just have something to do. Or do you take, I think you take the otherworldly possessions with you 
with you, right? That's why you're buried with all your gold and your favorite yeah. cats and yeah, everything. The, yeah, yes. yeah, I think the idea. So, and your friends. Sometimes your friends And your with. friends. So that's a pretty fun religious belief. Yeah. Do we think there's anyone who still believes in this in the modern day, right? I think and Trump then, definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, let's say you believe in this. Are all, like, mummy movies, like, super, like, offensive I mean, this, so, like, let's say you st- you still believe in this, which is listen. Nobody still believes. In but this. if you did, there's got to be one person that's like pretty cool idea. There's one Do you person go that see believes like it, yeah. Brendan Fraser, the mummy, going like this is very wrong. They're getting this all wrong. Like if there was, a, it'd be like the equivalent of like a movie now where it's about like Jesus back from the dead to kill you. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, that's just. It's just that belief and, uh, uh, you know, tradition is lost to time. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't believe in this necessarily, but I wouldn't mind if you guys would, like, just bury me with, like, one cool thing just in case that's true. Yeah. You can have my pogo stick. Pogo stick. I was going to say, like, just like a, <laughs> if you gave me, like, those PS1s that had the portable LCD screen. Ooh, yeah, I had one of those. And, like, mm. one copy of Crash Team Racing. What would I and think? Just put, it just, it'll cost you like 40 bucks. Just toss it in there. That's just more in, than just 40 case, bucks. Yeah. Just um, okay, 50. I'll spot you. Wait, what would That's you like take down? and something bucks. Just toss it in there just in case it's all true so I have something to do. Dom, you want a pogo stick. Well, I was gonna give him my pogo. No, I don't want I don't want a pogo stick. <laughs> well, well you're it's gonna good because I don't it's have. <laughs> it's an extra gift, Chad. Okay, Chad, it's two, you get two gifts. Then you can do some physical play and some just video oh, game cool. sure, Wait, sure. are you telling me that you want me to kill archie and mummify him after no, you die no 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 you mate no after <laughs> i'm just saying like throw a couple things in there just in case do you guys want me to fulfill this request for you at all a couple of pack of cards maybe, yeah maybe maybe, maybe, maybe two magic, magic decks yeah, yeah. okay oh, just like so cool. play with someone i can get really good at it do you want black Wait, do you get to share your toys with other dead egyptian I think people you make the choice so, All right, let's say you can't. I can at least flip the cards over for both people. You're right. Yeah, you could solitaire it somehow. Yeah, like, or like... You, you get to at least look at the cool artwork. Yeah, exactly. And that art's so cool. It is. There's probably some Egyptian-themed uh, uh, characters in Magic, too. They After just came travel, out, actually. They just released that set. Just so there you, you know. go. Bury me with that. I'll be a big, I'll be a big hit. Um... <laughs> But let's get to in in mummy heaven, dude. (laughs) Let's get back to the story. Let's get to the end. Let's just cut to the chase. (laughs) Let's cut to the end. Skip to the end. Okay. Dom, take us through. You take us. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. So they go away through this mummy. And now there's like days where they're just kind of thinking about like, oh, bum. Oh, shucks. We lost our jewels. And I guess we somehow lost. I don't know. This is weird. And then the kids basically witness uh, the partner. What's his name? Dr. F. Dr. Dr. Fielding? Dr. Fielding, like, what they think is murder Uncle Ben. Yeah, he's dragging yes. him. He's, like... Like, like yeah. leading him, but it's weirdly vague, because they, like, they follow so far behind, they can't see what's going on, and they think he maybe shoves Uncle Ben into the tomb, and then walks away very fast, and one of the most frustrating things I've ever read in Goosebumps, <laughs> Sorry goes, like, hey, Dr. F., what'd you do there? And then, like, Do- Dr. F, like, looks around, like, worried, and then, like, doesn't see them. And then they keep yelling, and he just walks right on by. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they, like, so they <laughs> he ignored them in, like, the middle of the desert. Like, who else would they be yelling for? Right. In yes. the desert at night. And they're like, oh, no, he killed him. Spoilers, he didn't kill him. So it's weird that this moment existed where, like, they just didn't talk to him. It's, I mean, he has to write these on a first draft. He did so many of them. He probably had... He probably just had to get to the next one. Do you think he just like didn't know if Dr. F killed him yet? Yeah. Possibly. Well, I mean, he, he probably just changed what it was as he got down into the details of what goes on in, uh, in the pyramid and then had a quick go. Oh, wait, why did he do that? Uh, he didn't hear them. Yeah, just said later at the end, like, so why did you not hear us? I just didn't hear you, I guess. Well, I think he, he panicked, right? He, he was like, he went he to go panicked, get the cop, yeah. cops, right? Because the cops, they describe him as like riding with, like walking with a long stride. Yeah. So what, what essentially happened was he realized. I imagine he's doing the Ministry of Silly Walks. Yes. Like, yeah, it was like a like gallop or whatever it is he does. He was doing that walk where, like, you know you have to cross the street because a car is waiting, but you don't, like, want to super run. You just kind of like, I'm going to step it up a little bit. Yeah, you, you don't want to look like a dummy and run, but... Yeah, you don't want to be an asshole either, so you're, right. like, kind of doing a quick walk. Yeah. So they go in, right? I, it's There's just so many weird twists in the story. 
they eventually they go in after him after a lot of waiting they go <laughs> they go down to the hallway and before i forget there was a drawing earlier where uh <laughs> gabe's like I see, uh, sorry, don't tangent before I forget. They they go down the hallway and they see a drawing. He's like, oh, weird animal. And she's like, no, that's Bart Simpson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle, Ben's, Uncle Ben's workers drew that on the walls of the tomb, you dumb idiot. They, de- they, they defaced the they, tomb? They defiled like, the tomb. Allowed? He drew Bart Simpson. So anyway, they go down back in the tombs and they go back into the mummy room. But now the mummy's tomb is closed, which is definitely not a scarier thing to see. Oh, yeah. Also, all. they we did, we skipped over. They found a dead body and they looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't remember the dead body. The mummy. They they find the mummy and they look at it and he's like, oh, it's a dead dude. Gross. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, right. So they, they open the tomb. Oh, <laughs> uh, yuck. Another one of these. Oh, yuck. Another one. I'm going to take one of these hands for a second. <laughs> hey, check this out. Sorry. He's jacking it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they open the tube and it's Uncle Ben who is like been kidnapped and and uh, tied up and has soiled himself and has soiled, that probably <laughs> soiled himself. I probably would too if I was trapped for what seemed if like a whole night. Somebody put me in a mummy's coffin for yeah. a whole night yeah. probably or would, sarcophagus probably rather. So you're like oh no it wasn't Dr. F it was Nyla. Yep. Nyla, that's her name, Nyla. Nyla she yep. just appears. She just appears and reveals, because she also had one of these earlier, that she had a, a pendant. scarab necklace, just just like Gabe does. But it didn't have and a scarab in it. Oh, I thought it had a scarab in it, so it didn't no, have a scarab in it. It was just okay. an empty well, ball of amber the, that she had around her neck. Yeah, because the magic of it is is that because oh, sure, okay. she... Well, you don't, yeah, you don't have to say, you don't have to say yeah, because I'll, I'll explain okay, it. Okay, explain it, Chad. Yeah, sorry, I, I missed that detail. Um... She's like, oh, hi, I am the sister of this mummified prince. I am, I am 4,000 Ta- Ram- years Ram- old. Ra- Ra- Miso ramen. Yeah. Miso <laughs> ramen. And I don't know what my plan is. I guess I just want to bring him back to life. And there's that phrase that you discovered on the walls earlier. And I... Eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. <laughs> oh, we totally skipped over a massive plot detail. This is important to say. So, like, when they go into the hallway. No, no ben, fa- ben gives them the words. Ben gives them the words. Yeah, this is important to say. So, Ben gives them the words, like a five word phrase. Mm-hmm. And Nyla, halfway through, is like, hey, I'm cozying up to you, Uncle Ben. Clearly, you think I like you, but I'm really just trying to hear what the phrase is. Yep. To, like, bring my brother back to life. I'm going to just. And I've been immortal because of this, like, uh, amulet thing I'm wearing, the Ambure amulet, right? Yep. So, so she was immortal, but didn't know magic words. She didn't know magic words. I want to know so much about what her story was of why she's immortal. Like, did, had she not known where her her brother was? Like, did she know her brother was there, but she somehow can't translate Egyptian? And, and Uncle Ben could. She's been alive for thousands of years and just couldn't get her act together. She couldn't to get, get in, in there? there. Like, did she just need a dude with a crowbar? Hmm. But she's like, I'm going to bring my brother back. There's so many questions about her. Yeah, they don't. They what? really gloss over all that. This is like a, a one chapter explanation and event that happens. And if she's immortal, what is she doing for four thousand years? So she has nice modern clothes. Did she buy those? Does maybe she, have yeah, a maybe she was just like a like maybe a she, dilettante, just like having a good time around the world, and she was just like, you know, I guess it's probably time to get my bro back to life. Yeah, maybe she was really a journalist. That's, what, that's yes. This is the most fascinating thing of every time they ever do an immortal story where they have to like live for thousands of years. Yeah, they never cover the like. There's always some down periods where this immortal person has to have a job. Like right. Vandal Savage in DC Comics when he rises through the ranks of industry. At some point. The immortal character had like a desk job, even if it's in like 1800s, he delivered fish. I always think about that with a vampire. I'm like, they get rich as hell, but they got to work to get that rich over some time. And you know, at some point they like invested their money poorly and they're like, well, son of a, I'm restarting. Yeah, and another like, thousand years of being poor. Great. And building it up. Yada, yada, yada. They invest in like, you know, Worldcom, lose all their money yeah. in the early 2000s, got to start over again. Like, this is a weird story for her, but we barely know the details. Yeah, Enron fucked over a lot of vampires. God, you know <laughs> they did. They probably thought it was a sure thing. Yep. <laughs> but it's okay because when you're a vampire, you don't hate work because you have infinite time the pleasure is just really whatever you're doing yeah whatever yeah. you want to do i guess that's true so she's like i'm gonna bring my brother back and then the brother comes to life and attacks her saying do not what was the phrase do not disturb yeah me? Let, let me be in peace or something along those lines let and me attacks, rest in peace yeah he attacks her but chokes why? her chokes her 
chokes her. Again, mummy murdering someone in this book. Murders his own sister. Yeah. But why? Because she didn't wake him up. This is my whole problem. He wants she to be woken up. up, though. Gabe woke, Gabe woke no, him she, up. No, she did wake him up. So Gabe, Gabe said those words, but he didn't do it. She stole his little, his jerkin claw and took it down there. And she said the oh, words. That's right. And she did that while they were down there. So something that isn't explained to us, I guess that kind of is, is that Dr. Fielding grabbed Uncle Ben to take him down there because she went in and he saw her go in or the cops saw her go in yeah. or something like that. I don't know. The cops are doing he a terrible job. He said it was interesting. It was a random lady. And it's like, you can take care of her, Uncle Ben. And then he got his ass kicked by an immortal, you know, 18 year old girl. Yeah. And she's a good mum. She's a good mummy. And a mummy uses their mind powers, which is a, which the, uh, a power that they didn't use in the first book. <laughs> Wait, do you think she's using her mind powers on Uncle Ben? Hell yeah. She, that dude, that's what she was doing. She was Mummies prestiging don't him the have whole time. Brains? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no. Well, she's not a mummy, though. She's an immortal woman. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's why her brother couldn't recognize her because his brain was removed through his uh, nose. Okay. So I guess I missed that detail. I know she stole because they're like, oh, quick, the mummy's attacking. Gabe, use your claw. I don't have it. I guess I haven't thought about it. Yeah. My jerk off claw. She right. took it. I guess I missed the detail where she uses the claw. You need both the claw and the phrase to wake him up. I think so. Okay, because my whole beef was like, you see Gabe earlier at night, like say the phrase just to scare. Sorry, it's like it's Gabe's fault, not hers. It is more fun if it's Gabe's fault, though. Yeah, the kids do nothing in this. Yeah, you but, know what? Let's well, make it he, be just be Gabe's fault because he's a dick. He and tries. He tries to break up the fight, right? Yeah. He's like, "All right, you two siblings, don't fight each other." I know what this <laughs> is like. Yeah, little old Gabe jumps up on her mummy's back, and the necklace falls and from cracks. Nyla's neck, and it cracks, and it's revealed she's thousands of years old, and she turns into a scarab. Right? Yeah. She she mm-hmm. has a weird thing where she turns into a scarab at. Night, uh huh, and crawls within to into the amber to preserve her. But I hadn't tracked that like she was only ever there during the day or night, which is very strange. Because also like the Uncle Ben goes into the pyramid at night, which means that she would have been in beetle form. I don't understand. Right. <laughs> but she turns back into a beetle. The day is saved. Oh yeah, Natalie gets away. By the way, they don't step uh, on her. They don't mention what happened with the mummy after that. The mummy just kind of wandered around, I guess. <laughs> the mummy well, just goes house. back to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, he does what he wants. <laughs> Much like the so, first mummy, I guess he just goes back to have nothing happen to him. Yeah, he's just like an old man. He's just like, ah, blah, just goes, <laughs> and goes and just lays down. <laughs> you guys lock the door when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Put the TV on sleep mode for 60 minutes. <laughs> put, out, put out the light. <laughs> I love when old people would say "put out the light." Oh yeah, because as if we still have candles. Yes, yes. old people uh, are so, weird, man. So then, all is well and good. Everyone is saved yet again. <laughs> They're going to bed. Gabe gets into his cot. Yeah, and he says, "Wow, I can't believe I saved the day, and uh, I, uh, I, I did it." Uh, I did, I saved the day and everything's okay. Got my jerk and hand back. And then he got my jerk <laughs> yep. and hand back. And then he lays in his cot and he says, ouch. Yeah, I didn't understand that. Was that was that him being bit by the scarab? No, because well, sorry jokes right before he says that. She's like, you better watch out. She's still a beetle. She could come and bite you and kill you. So that was just been her beating, biting him or we don't know. It's ambiguous. What a weird ending. Yeah, so um, this book ends because there is no sequel with Gabe dying. Yes. Yeah, Gabe dies. So this is the, it's like the Sopranos, you know? Or. <laughs> or That's where Sopranos stole it from. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> fucking thieves. Or, or sorry pinched him and it's just a callback. But Maybe. it's what you. Hey, it's good art. It's what you want to believe, no, Chad. It's what I'm you took calling, from it. Yeah, okay. It's I, good art. I'm going to say Gabe died. Yeah, I think he's dead. I think Sari grabbed the beetle and put it in his bed, and you she think, wants to inherit. You think Sari weaponized that mummy beetle and killed him? I think Sari knows that somehow Uncle Ben's eventually going to make millions of dollars off this mummy. So she's playing the long game. I she's get playing, you. I want to inherit that, and this Gabe kid's num- up is up. He keeps getting invited to all these expeditions. And he got the I'm amber the necklace daughter. from him, too, dude. You're right. I think yeah, you're on I thought that was weird that she didn't get a gift. <laughs> I remember thinking that during the middle of the scene. I was like, what's weird that you give your... 
nephew a thing that means immortality and like seems very rare but not but not your daughter whose mom died and you leave her alone all the time yeah and like he already got the magic jerking hand why does he get another thing (laughs) well it was to lure him over to egypt because he wouldn't have come if he wasn't going to get a present. You're right. Oh, You're right. Piece of shit kid. He's one of those kids like, I get to meet my aunt. I wonder what she got me this time. Yeah. You're right. What a, yep. what a, what a yeah. tool. This, is my, this goes back into my theory of Ben only getting his kids involved to bail him out. <laughs> I think it's, there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of goosebump characters where it's like a crazy scientist dad or uncle leading the kids down on a selfish plot, right? We have yeah, uh-huh. Deep Trouble and uh, Stay Out of the Basement. There's a lot of, like, parents just getting into science. A lot, of, a lot of parents that are curious and want to experiment, but they don't care about their kids' safety. There's a lot of that in this universe. Is this book dumb? I feel like this book is dumb. Yeah, this book is oblivious that there is one that exists before it in which almost (laughs) the same exact (laughs) events happen. And none of the characters have any apprehension about putting themselves in the same situations. It's stupid as hell. I I, Thank you. (laughs) Because, like, if you're going to do... It felt like like you're torn between, well, I've already done a mummy story, so I should use the kids again. But I want to tell you a story like you could tell another version of a mummy horror story with different people. Yeah. Could, well, like, the thing is, too, with both of these books is you got a mummy situation and you got a pyramid situation. You, let's have the mummy be in it almost from the beginning and have it be horrifying these people. But I, yeah, I thought it, like, again, one of the best summer movies ever. Brendan Fraser's The Mummy. The Mummy's mm-hmm. active by I feel like 15 minutes in. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's pretty quick. And there's like uh, he's hunting them down in different places. Yeah. Scarabs are biting people like it's a fun, constant threat. The R.L. Stein version of Brendan Fraser's The Mummy would have been like them driving through uh, just random countries, reading some books, maybe seeing something. And then the last 20 minutes, uh, Brendan, guy would Brendan Fraser gets like sidetracked by a guy that tickles him for like a half an hour. <laughs> oh, wait, can we talk about that weird scene in the very beginning? When, like, the, the weirdest fake out, it just felt so weirdly, like, white fear to me. Where uh-huh. Go on. He's, like, in the airport. He's like, man, I can't find my uncle anywhere. He's not going to pick me up. There's so many people I don't know. It. How will he find me? I'm in a strange country. I get uh-huh. being 12 or whatever how old he is. And then he, and then he hears a person out loud scream in a high-pitched voice, American taxi, American taxi. <laughs> and he turns and sees a random person, assumes it's Uncle Ben, and hugs him because Uncle Ben would say American Taxi as a joke. And then it's and then it's just like a bald Middle Eastern guy with like a big beard staring at him, and it's supposed to be scary. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's some Ameri- there's some uh, Egyptophobia going on there. Not, not, a guy like not threatening his life. He's literally just like, I hugged. I hugged a person not white. <laughs> I hugged a person not white. I don't know what to do. I about hugged it. a non-white. Yeah, I hugged a non-white. I'm very scared. Could, couldn't you do this book back in Michigan? I mean, <laughs> what, what is it? It's Return of the Mummy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's still got the summoner hand. You can have it where you you got mummy zombies Yo, coming up out un- of the pool or un- something, a la bo- poltergeist. I would love that. Yo, yeah, Uncle just Ben. Something. Uncle Ben finds. A sarcophagus brings yep. it back to America to put it in the museum. Traveling and, exhibit, uh, yep, yep, traveling exhibit. It. You're just going it. to see his uncle Ben's traveling exhibit That's from the mummies that he found in the pyramid in the first book. Yes. And his summoner claw accidentally brings him to life, and it's scary. Yeah. And, I, and I would go and to Little Pet Cemetery. D- different things around the town that are coming start coming to life too. Yeah. And he uses Sari's rollerblades to chase them. <laughs> <laughs> and he befriends the mummy. It becomes more of a like, um, uh, what's another Brendan Fraser movie? Uh, Eco Man? What's the name? Is what's the case? Encino, oh, Encino, uh, Encino Man. Encino Man. Sorry, yeah. Encino Man. Yeah, uh, which has um, the great line. Hold on, let me make sure I get it exactly like right on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pull up IMDb trivia quotes on Encino Man. We, didn't it's, we talk about how Encino Man and Blast from the Past are the same movie? No, it's um, it's a uh, uh, son-in-law. Son-in-law. So, uh, oh, maybe not. No, no, no. It's Bla- Blast from the Past is the movie where they're, Christopher Walken is his dad, and uh, there's a nuclear scare, so they go into their bomb shelter and stay in there for 50 years, yeah. and then, or however long, and then Brendan Fraser comes out as an adult, and he's never been, and yeah. now he's in the 90s. It seems like a great premise. I've never seen oh. it. Yeah, it's just the same thing but as does it have the line, to Paulie Shore, from Sean Astin. Sean Astin delivers this great line. <laughs> 
The only thing you've cared about in your life is nugs, chilling, and grindage. It's a 90s ass line, y'all. Great. It's pretty incredible. Wait, I, I mean, this to, book could have used that line. That could use that line. I just want to clarify. I'm sure, I'm going to take this out because I'm sure we talked about this on the episode of the podcast. Do I, I talked about how I saw Son in Law, the other Pauly Shore movie, and it's a crossover with Encino Man. Wait, what, what, what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You brought this up maybe on Tales from the Tavern. Oh. Though. Yeah, Paul. so bring it up here. Just, get, just tell Paul. Because <laughs> Paul clearly does not know. I want to know. Yeah. Are you familiar with the Pauly Shore movie Son in Law? I am. Uh, I saw it growing up so much as a child. Yeah. Uh, Indiana boy, girl meets California boy and boy oh boy do they fall in love and they're different mm-hmm. uh, there's a weird scene where Carla Giugino gorgeous actress Carla Giugino is in college there and Pauly Shore is the RA of the dorm is throwing a crazy college party mm-hmm. and this will tell you exactly what year this movie came out <laughs> and he's it's a costume party and he's dressed as Carmen Miranda because Pauly Shore's character the weasel or whatever is super <laughs> yeah. is super fun like that he's, he's laid back super druggy yeah. uh-huh. he dresses up crazy stuff he lives his life Compared to Indiana Girl Stuffy's conservative life, yeah. right? In the middle of the co- the party, Brendan Fraser, who's not in the movie, walks by as Encino Man, like with his, like his no hair all days, way. and Pauly Shore goes like, "What? Who? No way!" And then Encino Man Brendan Fraser comes by, reaches up into his Carmen Miranda fruit basket, and pulls out a frog. I don't know why there's a frog in the fruit <laughs> basket. And then eats the frog, because that's what Encino Man does. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Eats the frog, takes a bite of it, and then walks away. And Pauly Shore's like, cool costume. There's no way. It couldn't be. What? Like, so so he either has seen the movie Encino Man and thinks that's the guy from Encino Man, or he's the same guy from Encino Man. (laughs) That's beautiful. The latter. Who lived a life also in -in Son-in-Law and thinks maybe he met his caveman friend again. I love it. I I like that idea. I like that It's a weird crossover cameo that makes no sense. I think this is the beginning of the Pauly Shore cinematic universe. Oh, my (laughs) God. (laughs) Or maybe Brendan Fraser. I don't know. Oh, All right, so where does In the Army now fit into this? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the recruitment movie starring Andy Dick and Polly Shore. <laughs> that is a reboot of Stripes. Is that what it's supposed to be? I never saw it. It's supposed yeah. to be Stripes. It's, a, it's like, I mean, it's just a knockoff of Stripes. How do you go into that movie going, we're going to do better than Bill Murray? Uh, uh, yeah. You are in the 90s and Polly Shore is hot and you're like, we need to make money now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, what's funny bringing up Polly Shore is that uh, uh, the next book in the series. Oh, my God. Well. It's called Phantom of the Auditorium, right? Okay, sure. Uh-huh, yeah. I think that's the name of the book. Uh, Pauly Shore's first movie is called Phantom of the Mall. We might have to what? watch that. Yes. I've seen it. It's worth watching. It's very bad. It's entertaining. Um, Ma- and uh, Pauly Shore is giving it his goofiest all. It's where he started. Maybe a good Camp Goosebuds watch. Yeah, we'll have to attain a copy. We'll see. I uh, think I'd like to get in on that. Yeah, you might have to might have to astral project over here for the recordings. Phantom of the Mall lives in the mall, and he's like training, like he's punching body bags, <laughs> but it's never really explained why what? he's like doing karate and stuff up in like I don't know the scaffolding of this mall somewhere. Uh-huh. Is this just re- is this just like the random like that uh, karate's big, so we should do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Here's a great thing about that movie, too. It's uh, it's actually called um, Phantom of the Mall, colon, Eric's Revenge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what? It, it does have a... St- that title. Who is Eric, and what does Eric, he want Eric revenge the, for? I'm into this. I think Eric is a guy who is working at the mall or working on building the mall, and he died, or he perished, or he got burned, and now he lives in the mall. This is like a Candyman situation we got going on uh, here. Something. Some kind of revenge. I mean, all revenge stories are a little Candyman. You're right. <laughs> and all Candyman stories are a little revenge. But You're not right. the Bye Bye Man. Not the Bye Bye Man. Different. Um... We should wrap up this episode. Let's wrap it up. People have been listening to us for a long time. Hey, guys, there's a Q&A. Somebody asked if we should yeah. do a Q&A. Let's oh, do yeah. that. You have any interest or in they, they demanded it, right? Yeah, I'm into it was, that. A, it was a slight request. I believe it was on the Patreon. They said, separated. if Chad doesn't answer this question, I'm unsubbing. Whoa! Put some words in the mouth. Yeah, I mean, that's just what I remember. That was the tone. We might need, if you guys have any interest in a Q&A, let us know. We should, if we're going to do it, by the way, we'll make like a... A place to post questions yeah. and, and I think we and could do, do like, sort of like Reddit or Twitter or something like that. Yeah, that sort of thing for sure. Um, guys, any final thoughts on this book? I think we've already talked about how to improve it, right? 
Uh, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, sorry as the main character and or uh, taking the month, the, the claw back to Michigan. Yeah, I think that's just a great idea. <laughs> I, it's <laughs> yeah, it's much like Jurassic World putting the T-Rex in the suburbs. I'd rather see a mummy like tearing shit up in the middle of Detroit. Yeah, I'm into that. That'd be great. Bring it to him. Bring the mummy to America, man. Everything mummy was coming to America. Everything he, was coming to America in the early 90s. He goes to a Tigers game. <laughs> Wait, hold on though. You know, in, if this was a '90s movie, it would be like they're playing the mummies, or the no, they're, sorry, they're playing the pharaohs, the yeah, pharaohs, the pharaohs, definitely. and like he walks out into the middle of the green, and everyone's like, "Whoa, new costume! Uh-huh. We love the mascot!" We and love- he's got sunglasses on, and then he starts like and he then, starts popping and locking, and then he rips off a pitcher's arm, and they're like, "Whoa, great special effects!" And he goes like, "Please, no, it's not a joke." <laughs> I just want to remind everyone of one of the greatest comedy montages out there. The Naked Gun, I Love L.A. baseball montage. From I got to watch Gun. it. Watch yeah. it sometime. It's fun. Oh, you have Randy Newman doing music for the back of that? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's set to I Love L.A. Yeah. Great. It's a good I time. Have Great. To, to watch it. Naked Gun, guys. I really <laughs> like it. <laughs> All I remember of Naked Gun is that one of the movies, O.J. Simpson goes plummeting down a staircase in a wheelchair. Yeah, there's a running gag that he's getting beat up. Yeah. It's kind of weird in retrospect to know about O.J. Simpson and to just see a movie that just continually beats him up. Yeah. All right, let's we'll leave this. it there. We'll leave it there on that on that note, uh, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, by the way, thank you so much to everyone who's been talking about the uh, podcast over on our subreddit on Reddit uh, slash r slash goosebuds. There's discussion already going on about this episode. People pointing out the exact same things that we've already said on this show. So we're not the only ones this crazy. Uh, not the jerk off hand though, but some similar ideas. Uh, appreciate all your feedback. What else should we talk about? You also uh, check out our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Goosebuds. Uh, we've been dropping out cool extra bonuses for you guys at certain pledge levels. Your support means a ton to us. You also get to help vote on upcoming Choose Your Own Adventure books, things like that. Uh, it means a ton. We love you all. Yes, yes, thank you. And we'll have another Choose Your Own Adventure soon. Yeah, very soon. Oh, yeah, I think we're going to do uh, peanut butter tack. Purple peanut butter. Purple peanut butter. Still feels like a, a drug phrase. It is. Is it? We'll do purple peanut butter coming up very, very soon. Um, any other parting words, guys? Uh, this is Paul Testosterone A. Richie <laughs> signing off. Oh, the gas is back. This is Zeke Vander telling no. you to stay chill. No. In the hill. No, the gas is back. <laughs> oh, no, the gas leak is out. We better get out of here. Okay, all right. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See ya. bye. This show was brought to you by our very dedicated Patreon supporters, and we wanted to shout out your names and give you a little thank for helping us out. Asim Zaman. Kale Clinton. SBS. Nicolas McCaskey. <laughs> Eric England. <laughs> Donko 8. Christopher Matalep. Bean Daddy Walkowski. Danky Mix Stanky. <laughs> August Cole. Paul Walker, Sarah Kemp, YT Chan, Philip McKee, Zachary J. Boyce, Matt Aflanagan, Jubs, Grady Wakeman. Oh man, you got Jubs. The Ru- <laughs> the Rupal Productions, Mayor Nagortorium, Joshua Lopez, Matt Hinton, Jordan Winkleman, Scapoosh, Hilary Pazzo. Martin A. Marcias. Daniel Calejas. Jesse Stage. Kenneth Tyler Burns. Madeline Voker. Jim Greaves. John Luke. Axel Rock. Natu Pearly Henderson. Christopher Boyce. Hollis Hornbeak. Turtle Mancer. Jeremy Stacy. <laughs> Josh Ellen Bogan. Zachary James Boyce. Walter Frazier. Ryan Fisk. One million me hours per hour. Ford Theater Reunion. Sean Lyons. Cameron Murphy. Paul Grasso. Ben Bueller. Michael McDowell. Nick Hayes. David Cron. David Lee. Zane Keefe. Ryan Kolka. I'm a Kevin. Sven Stormbeard. Joshua P. Robertson. Tim I. Healy. Ed Burdick. David Cole. 
Aaron Manchester. Sounds like a fucking cool action star. <laughs> <laughs> Alan M.K. Jenkins. Mickey C. Dapio, that's that Colby cheese. <laughs> <laughs> James Romano. Fernando Espindola. Jared Mason. And Kevin Booker. Boucher. Boucher, guys. Oh, Come on. Kevin Boucher. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Dierks. Derek Dalton. Melissa McPhee. Jonas Blatterman. Grace Nickel. Matt Sadler. Nick Hinkle. Benson P. Brian Fometten. Fred Atkins. Glenn Eisenhuth. Jacob Dow. Will Scott. Nathan Dolezal. Clayton C. John Jimco. Mike Lantary. Kyla Tharp. Buddy Buddy Morrill. Ah, fuck, that wasn't mine. (laughs) Get the fuck out of here, Paul. (laughs) Chris Birch. Joe Scott. John Keaty. Ronald King. King of the Ronalds. Ryan Wade. (laughs) Zachary Lawson. And Heath Robinson. Thank you all so very much, guys. We love you, each and every one of you. Thank you, kisses. (laughs) 